There have been many spins on the legend of King Arthur, and almost all of them involve Merlin in some capacity. The character of Merlin has had a range of powers from prophecy to shapeshifting, and like Merlin himself, media concerning Arthurian legend has taken a variety of forms, spanning literature, television, and video games. The Hand of Merlin continues this trend, taking the form of a roguelike, turn-based strategy game. The Hand of Merlin begins with a cinematic that sets the stage for the context of the game. Across an infinite number of worlds, Merlin created King Arthur as a champion and the Holy Grail as a tool to defend and combat a primordial force known as the Cataclysm. However, after being tricked and imprisoned by Morgana, Merlin re-emerges to find that Arthur failed in his quest and the Cataclysm still threatens to consume all worlds across the infinite universe. The player is tasked with building a party of champions within each of these worlds that, bolstered by the power of Merlin, stand as the last bastion of hope against the Cataclysm. Before beginning a run, you're prompted to select your initial team of champions, or Warband. There are melee, ranged, and magic classes, and you're able to build a party of three heroes. At first, you have one character in each class, and as you progress through the game, you can unlock new characters with different starting skills and stats. Each class has a passive skill, and each character has a unique secondary passive skill. You aren't forced into having one of each class of hero, so as you unlock more, you're able to have different compositions for additional replay value and challenge. The goal of each run in the Hand of Merlin is to traverse different areas, reach Jerusalem, and defeat the heart of the corruption that is plaguing the world. Each area consists of a branching path of nodes that all lead to a final encounter. There are different types of nodes that must be considered when planning your path through an area. These encounters are presented in a text adventure format, and the player is prompted to select from available options to resolve the encounter. As you traverse the map, encounters can grant the party additional resources, experience points referred to as renown, or combat scenarios. Your Warband is able to level up for every 50 renown obtained, and every level allows you to individually increase each character's health or armor, unlock a new skill, or upgrade an existing skill. As you traverse the area, nodes eventually become corrupted by the Cataclysm, meaning that if you do have a combat encounter, you'll fight abominations rather than typical bandits. These abominations are grotesque and powerful creatures that often have unique passives and abilities that must be considered during combat. While not an insurmountable obstacle, abomination encounters are likely to be where you'll have the most difficulty. Combat in the Hand of Merlin is constructed around turns and action points. Each hero in your warband has different skills and abilities that consume action points and pools of health and armor. Armor points act as health that's regenerated between encounters, and health points are treated as a separate total that can only be regained through the expenditure of resources. Combat encounters take place on a square grid with a cover system similar to XCOM. There are percentage hit chances based on if your target is in cover, specific attack properties, and buffs or debuffs on each character. Combat encounters begin with a formation phase where you're able to place your heroes within a limited area before the combat begins. After combat starts, actions are taken by you and your enemies in alternating order, unless a character has prepared a reaction skill. Each of your party members have a set amount of action points that they gain each turn, and these action points are used to move or use attacks and abilities. You aren't bound to a set character order, and you're able to freely act across all party members as long as they have remaining action points. This freedom enables you to set up optimal scenarios for situations you're trying to facilitate, such as making sure your party is close together to receive a buff before attacking, or preparing combos using skills that will trigger reactions of other party members. The Hand of Merlin stands out to me as a reasonably complex strategy game. Combat isn't as complex as something like Divinity Original Sin, but it's also not as simple as something like Fire Emblem. You're also able to undo the last move action that you did as long as no actions were taken after the movement occurred. This is a very player-friendly feature in a strategy game, because if you accidentally make a mistake in your movement, you're able to correct it without being punished. One thing that I had mixed feelings on was the narrative of the game. Constructing the narrative as Merlin attempting to save multiple worlds across the multiverse is interesting and bolsters the roguelite design of the game. Each run is a new world, and should you fail in your quest, it's framed as a single world being lost to the Cataclysm, as Merlin turns his attention elsewhere and attempts to save another world. However, the Cataclysm is presented as one of the most uninteresting types of antagonists in my opinion, a primordial force that only exists to destroy. While the premise is certainly well executed and makes sense within the context of the game, it does very little to inspire motivation. I think this could have been improved by presenting the Cataclysm as the conscious work of some opposing entity, to make the Cataclysm something more concrete than just an autonomous, unexplainable, entropic force. Another double-edged sword in the Hand of Merlin is that, while the gameplay is well-designed and executed, it can be somewhat long and fatiguing. 
Encounters are all well-written passages that succeed in immersing the player in the world, but reading each encounter can become cumbersome during a long play session. Combat being turn-based and tactical is also fatiguing because you're typically trying to optimize the order of your actions and protect your heroes from unnecessary damage. These things together result in lots of engaging thought and planning, which consequently result in longer runs. I'm not saying that being engaging is a bad thing, and in fact, it's arguably the desired experience with games like The Hand of Merlin, but a case can be made that longer total runtime is not typically desired in a modern roguelite game. I found that my runs in The Hand of Merlin were around four hours in total, and I often needed to take a break in the middle to recharge. I'll leave the debate of how long a roguelite game should be for another time, but I think what is considered a reasonable amount of time for a run varies from person to person. In my opinion, playthroughs in the Hand of Merlin are long enough to feel like an epic quest, but they are also long enough that it's definitely a challenge to go from start to finish in one sitting. If you're mentally fatigued, you're more prone to making mistakes, and if you want to succeed in the Hand of Merlin, avoiding mistakes is paramount. You're able to save and continue at any point in a run, and I do recommend taking advantage of this to rest and recharge if you want to maximize success. The Hand of Merlin, while certainly a longer game compared to other roguelites, executes its turn-based strategy formula well. Being part text adventure and part tactical combat, all wrapped in an easily replayable package, it succeeds in being an engaging strategy game without becoming too cumbersome. While each run has the same goal, the random encounters, heroes, and skills that are unlocked contribute to variety and replayability. If you're a fan of tactical turn-based strategy games, The Hand of Merlin is a great title to check out. Thanks for watching, take care, and remember, keep having fun.